Hi, everyone. Welcome to Love at First Laugh, the Green Room Edition. Today, I'm really excited because my guest today is an amazing voiceover actor, an actor and director. He has voiced over 600 characters in video games, animation, and anime. Best known as the voice of Batu in the Ghost in the Shell franchise, the Joker in several Batman games, including Injustice, Gods Among Us, and Injustice 2, Raiden in Mortal Kombat, and Ansem in Kingdom Hearts. I'm sure I put a Latin accent into all this stuff, but hey, that's who I am. Please welcome the amazing, incredible, super successful and talented Richard Epcar. Hi. 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 Happy hi. Sunday. <laughs> Happy How are you, Grace? I'm doing great. How are I, you? I, I'm good. I, I actually, I like the way, I like your little Latin uh, a accent on there. That was... <laughs> I, it was nice. Yeah, yeah. sometimes <laughs> I give it like a little spin because I'm not sure how to like make it an Anglo kind of pronunciation. So it's uh, okay. You did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I do what I can. Yes. We so all <laughs> we have some people joining us. Jose, hi, Jose. Thank you for joining us. Uh, if you guys have any questions for Richard or for me, whatever you want, just go ahead. Keep them PG-13, please. <laughs> just... I, think, I think a race car just went by your, your place there. Oh, yeah, yeah. The cops go by. I live in a very busy street. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes they come for me. It's okay. It's all good. Um, yeah. yeah. It's, it's hey. I know. I know it's how it. that goes. Right? Yes. Yeah. You have to have that once in a lifetime, right? I almost went to jail in Mexico because oh, we made a bad turn. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's not good. Yeah, like yeah. two weeks ago. I, I yeah. would not want to go to jail anywhere. No, that's no fun. So no. Um, we have to put some little dollars in the portfolio of the mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah, we were like, let's I, see. I heard about that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's like, I don't know how to say this, but uh, it's your first time in Tijuana. So let me... Uh, how can I put this? I was like, oh, shit, they want money. Okay. <laughs> How much is the ticket? And, and, and they're not shy about it, apparently. No. And I think they quoted me like a very crazy price of it on the ticket. It's like, it's going to be $800. I'm like, oh, great. Wow. Sure. That's what you want. Okay. Here you go. So anyway, um, back to you. <laughs> <laughs> I just have to get my little Tijuana. I thought stuff. we could spend the hour talking about the Mexican police. I think that would be a wonderful. That would be so fun. Have you that ever been be to Tijuana? Have, uh, have been I, I, you know, I've been to, I, I went to the University of Arizona in Tucson. And so we were right across the border from Nogales, which is uh, kind of similar, I imagine. And we used to, you know, it was, it was great in those days. You could go down, you know, we were a bunch of kids. We'd go down there and uh, you could get like a pitcher of beer and uh, a bunch of these big Wyma shrimp, about as big as my fist. And it would be like, you know, a buck or two, you know, for the whole thing. It was uh, it, it was ridiculous. And we used to go down there and have a lot of fun. But, yeah, those are <laughs> those were different times. I'm not so sure I would uh, would do that today. But uh, uh, probably I wouldn't recommend it <laughs> <laughs> unless you have a lot of cash to pay off the police. Yeah, they yes. And then we had a flat tire on top of it. Oh, my God. And we, they couldn't match the tire. No, yeah. And it was two women, like a Thelma and Louise. Oh, no. Oh, <laughs> yeah, boy. It was, a, it was fun, though. It was a Sounds lot. Sounds rough. Fun. Sounds rough. I'm sorry you had that experience. No, it's okay. I speak Spanish. I think that saved us from going to jail. Oh, <laughs> yeah. 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 I almost went to jail, as long as we're talking about this uh, sordid yeah. subject on your show. Uh, I almost went to jail one time. I was, uh, I was in a play, actually, and I was late. And it was opening night, and uh, I uh, cut through a gas station because there was a red light. I cut through a gas station. The guy gave me a ticket. Well, you know, I he gave me the ticket. I went to the theater. I did the show, and you know, I I kind of forgot about it because it, you know it was opening night. That was not something I was really thinking about. And then uh, a month or so later, I get pulled over, and the guy goes, uh, "Hey, how you doing? You having a good night?" I said, "Well, I was till you showed." <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he wanted to uh, he wanted to take me to jail because oh. I didn't uh, didn't deal with the ticket. So uh, fortunately, I had uh, a girlfriend at the time who was with me, and uh, she somehow managed to post bail for me before they put me in jail. But that was the that's as close as I ever came to going to jail, thankfully. But uh, yeah. that was that was a scary experience. It really is. Just yeah. the thought of going to jail. I'm telling you, I would have given him whatever. Yeah, anything, <laughs> like, anything they want, take it, take it. <laughs> 
Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Nobody wants that. Except my virginity, which is not there anymore. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> so I can't give him what's not there. Uh, so, <laughs> so let's start. Well, we'll talk about that later. Later, yes. yes. When the personal questions come. That'll um, be on the on the midnight show. We'll talk yes, about that. Yes, yes. There's going to be some personal questions. But All like, right, good. Oh, 13, yes. Good. All good. All right. uh, so I, I always start with my guests. Like, what propelled you to do uh, voice acting, directing, acting, all the wonderful stuff you do. What, all what that crazy, there? crazy stuff. Um, yes. Honestly, uh, it, it all started, well, you know, I, I think when I was a, a kid, I, I always wanted to be an actor, and I knew that. I mean, even when I was in uh, uh, kindergarten and first grade, I used to write these little skits, and we would perform them with our little, you know, friends. And so I, I think I always really wanted to do this kind of work. Um, and, uh, you know, I went to, I went to college and, uh, my stepmom tried to get, I was, I was an okay artist and she kept telling me, you know, you really should not go into show business It's a terrible profession. Don't do it. You'll never make a living. It's horrible. And, uh, uh, so she tried to get me to be a commercial artist, which was, uh, like torture for me. It really was horrible. And the, uh, art department was right next to the drama department. So one day I saw they were having auditions for a show. So I went in and I auditioned. It was the Crucible, and I got cast as John Proctor and, and the lead in the show. And the the dean of the drama department took me aside and said, "Hey, I really think you're terrific, and I want to give you a full drama scholarship." Mm -hmm. I said, "Really?" He said, "Yeah." And I said, "What do I have to do?" He said, "Well, you have to change your major and become a, a performing arts major." I said, "Okay." I was in, and my parents couldn't say anything about it because. They didn't have to pay for college anymore so you know so yeah. i got i got that and while i was there i did a bunch of shows this is probably way before your time but there was a show called petrocelli which they filmed in tucson which i was on and i did a bunch of commercials and a couple other tv shows that they filmed out there so i had my sag card and all that stuff when i came to la and i wanted to be uh, i wanted to be an on-camera actor to be honest with you i came out here to 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 do on camera stuff, which, and I did a lot of that when I first came out. I did a lot of uh, soap operas and uh, oh, nice TV shows. Yeah, I did all that stuff and a couple of movies and things like that. And I kind of fell into this, uh, this voice thing, which was, which was kind of interesting. But, uh, you know, it, it was, uh, I don't know that it was intentional, but I'm, I'm so happy that it happened because, uh, I've just been, working constantly now i just i'm always working there isn't a day that doesn't go by i don't have a job <laughs> so, that is so great so i guess it's a good thing and uh yeah. uh you know it just turned out to be a really really good thing plus i you know the good thing about uh voice acting is that you can become any character that you can vocally imagine whereas on camera you have to be you're kind of relegated to the way you appear so yeah. uh it, it's it's almost more creative in certain ways you know uh, the guys that do TV and that sort of thing, they're basically playing themselves in every TV show. Yeah. You know, there's, there's not a lot of stretch there. Uh, let's be honest. You know, I mean, they're, once in a while they get to play, you know, something that's really different and that's fun. But for the most part, you're playing yourself in a situation, you know, mm -hmm. basically. And, uh, and the thing that I love about the voice acting is I get to be all these incredible, crazy characters, you know, and it's just really fun. And so I really enjoy that a lot. You know, and I still listen, I still do the on camera and all that stuff, but uh, this has just been so I've been so busy with the the voice stuff and the directing. Now I'm doing a I'm doing a big, big project for um, Netflix. My wife and I are actually co-directing that. And, Fantastic. Uh, oh, yeah. great. You work with your wife. That's so cool. I work with my wife a lot on a lot of different projects. And actually, the the one before that, we did a big project for Netflix uh, and it's called Forecasting Love and Weather. It's on Netflix, and it's a wonderful. Uh, we directed the ADR. It was a Korean uh, wonderful show, and we did the uh, we directed the voices and the ADR on that. And we do a lot of that. We do uh, Lupin the Third. We do a lot of those uh, cartoons and that sort of thing. And nice. we've been doing that forever. You know, that's amazing. Well, here you have some fans. Um, yeah, hi fans. <laughs> The man show that you have to be a million times Yay. funnier than Howard Stern. Yay. Oh, you're sweet. Yes. Thank you. Yes, Thank the you. midnight show with Richard Epcart. Right? I would like that. A million times funnier that. than Howard Stern. So there you go. Right? Thank you, Nat. I appreciate that. Yes. Uh, 
Um, you know, it's funny. My wife's last name is Stern, and people always say, "Are you related to Howard Stern?" And she, oh, she's, wow. she's not a fan, so it's it's not <laughs> it's not a compliment to her, you know. Oh, it's not. No. <laughs> don't tell her. I won't. I won't. Tell yes, her. don't. Uh, so here's Jennifer. Hi, Jennifer. Um, what what shows Jennifer. have I been on? Is that mm -hmm. me? You mean on camera, or you mean as far as a, a voice actor? Uh, maybe why don't you tell her about both? That would be oh cool. okay. Like, All maybe right. well, like your favorite two shows well, are on camera. I mean the, the on camera stuff. Like I said, I did a lot of the soaps. I was on Santa Barbara. I was on uh, uh, Young and the Restless, uh, Days of Our Lives, and uh, um, I keep thinking about this. I, I keep going back to this. It's a quick story, but I was doing uh, Young and the Restless a million years ago at CBS, which was on, on uh, Fairfax. I don't even remember yes. you know where that. And I was hanging out. They did uh, uh, The Price is Right in the next studio. So they had all the cars and all the, you know, the prizes and everything were out in the hall, you know. So I'm walking around. I'm looking at the, you know, the prizes and checking it out. And this guy comes up to me and he goes, you look familiar. And I turn around and it's John Ritter. And I said, well, you look familiar, you know, and we, we both laugh. We talk about it. He goes, what are you doing here? I said, um, I'm doing a soap. He said, "Which soap?" I said, uh, "Young and the Restless." He said, "I've never, I've never seen that set. Can you, can you get me in there?" I said, "I'm going. I'm with John Ritter." I go, "Yes, come on." So I showed him around. I took him around and introduced him to everybody. And I don't know why I just flashed on that, but he, I just want to say he was like one of the nicest people I've ever met in my life. Aww. He just couldn't have been nicer, and uh, that was really cool. So I did that, and then I did a bunch of shows over there at uh, CBS, and. Uh, I did uh, a bunch of movies of the week, um, and I did uh, a film called The Memoirs of an Invisible Man with Chevy Chase, Daryl Hannah, Sam Neill, and I was uh, one of the bad guys. I got to slap, you know, Daryl Hannah around. In fact, when I was on Santa Barbara, uh, I kidnapped Robin Wright, and I tied her up, and I was injecting oh, wow. her with blue fluids and slapping her around and doing all this stuff, and it was uh, no Great. way to treat a lady. <laughs> yeah, no. <laughs> I'm sure your wife did not approve. <laughs> no, she didn't, she didn't care for that. No. But it was fun. I, I did a lot of that stuff. And then, uh, yeah, the soaps are a lot of fun to do. Where they, they were a lot fun of fun, to do, yeah. yeah. You know, the thing about the soaps is uh, people don't realize it, but, you know, you do a soap and you have a decent part, which I had in a lot of these shows. You get like 20 pages of dialogue. You right? Know, and you're doing, yeah, it's great. And you're doing all this stuff. And then and then when you get a, like a guest star on a on a primetime TV show, you have like one or two lines and they give you guest star billing, you know, and I'm going, yeah. you know, when you do a soap and you learn all that dialogue mm -hmm. and then you go on those shows and you have, you know, just a few lines, it's like a piece of cake. You know, it's, it's nothing, really right. so easy. Yeah. So it's a great I, I mean, I highly recommend. I know some people go, oh, I would never do a soap or whatever. But, you know, they're a lot of fun. The, the actors, there's wonderful actors on them and you get mm -hmm. to really uh get to sink your teeth into some of this stuff you know absolutely it's money and training at the same yeah. time so you can't beat that now did did they want to know some of the voice stuff that i did as well or yes yeah, she does but let me let me uh, show your comments nate okay, yes. saying the go oh, you're the goat of thank you. voice actors oh Hello. thank you thank I you agree. nate that's very 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 kind of you thank you i appreciate that that's that's a that's a that's a high praise. I appreciate that. At first, I thought they were they thought I was uh, worshiping the devil when they said I was the goat. I wasn't sure what they were talking about. Right, the greatest of all time. I yes, know, I, I know, the goat. Or like, <laughs> or like goat. When they say goat, I think like old. You know, like if they call me the goat, I'm like no. But no, it's good. It's good. Well, thank um, you, Nate. That's very kind of you. I appreciate that. Yes. I really do. Um, yeah. Some some yeah. of the the voice stuff that I'm uh, you mentioned some of them uh, yes. one of some of my favorites are Raiden in Mortal Kombat of course one of my favorite the Joker he's a really fun character to do oh I bet uh, yeah he's really fun um, and uh, Bato you mentioned in Ghost in the Shell Jigen and Lupin the Third I've been doing him for twenty years I've been doing Raiden and the Joker for fourteen years now nice um, which is it's so nice when you get these characters and they just keep you know they keep going on and on and on to other incarnations and other games and stuff like that. I'm doing a huge game right now. I can't talk about it, unfortunately. It's it's going to be released in the fall, but uh, I have the lead in that, so that's going to be a fun one. Um, yeah. So Amazing. just so much stuff. That's 
Excellent. Do you do you have any rituals that you prepare for like <laughs> Well, I am the goat, so I have to have rituals, right? You have to, yes. <laughs> a little satanic ritual or something. Do you have no 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 no? no Only when I'm I do the okay. Joker. Only when the Joker comes. Only out. when the Joker. Yeah, yeah. yeah that's <laughs> because he's evil, you see. <laughs> I love the voice. <laughs> yeah, he's crazy. He's a lot of fun to do. He uh, he is just uh, when I do Raiden, and, and and sometimes they fight each other, which is really fun because I get to be both characters. So I'm I'm fighting myself and I'm talking to myself, and you know, okay. which most people in LA do anyway. But uh, I know, you know right? <laughs> I get paid to do that, so it's nice. Uh, yeah. So do you have any rituals like? Um, you know, I do. I do a half hour of warm ups basically before I go in the or, studio, yeah, just course. to protect my my voice because a lot of these games, it's a lot of uh, um, you know, it's it's heavy uh, yelling and screaming sometimes, and you want to you want to protect your instrument. You don't want to be yes. uh, hurting yourself, you know, mm -hmm. and you have to know how to do that stuff uh, so that you don't hurt yourself so you have longevity in this business. Thank God I've, uh, where's some wood around here. I'm going to knock on wood here. I've been, yeah. uh, I've been doing this for a long, long time, a long, long time. Do you have I, any potions that you drink for your throat? potions? Any potions? Um, yeah. Where is my potion? Uh, <laughs> Part of the ritual must be in my booth. I have a booth at my house. Uh, you know, during the pandemic, it was, uh, it was, terrible for everybody for the most part because uh, a lot of people weren't able to work and they weren't able to leave their home but uh for the voice actors it was uh, it was kind of a boon because uh, a lot of us have our own uh setups in our house so we get to uh record remotely and i did a lot of that i did games i did animation i did anime i did a lot of uh you know dubbing i directed from my home Fantastic. uh did a, yeah i did a lot of that stuff so um there is a there is a it's a i don't see it on my desk uh but it's a it's a chinese uh cough syrup it's made of uh lychee and honey lychee syrup and honey and okay. there's, there's no narcotic or anything in it but it basically yeah. what it does is it just coats th your throat so if you if you're doing something that's vocally stressful mm -hmm. you can coat your throat and you you know you take a little sip of it and the, the person who turned me on to that is Fred Tatashore, who uh, does the voice of uh, of the, the Hulk. So he's always screaming, and, he, and he's a terrific VO, and he's a very talented, super talented guy and super nice guy. And uh, so he turned me on to that, uh, and I've been using that ever since, and it's been, it's it really, you notice a huge difference when you're done not using that, and, and if you do use it, it just really saves you a lot, so. Oh, that's amazing. That's awesome. Uh, so here, Nate is telling us, I was having a terrible weekend until I started watching the show. That is the highlight oh, of my weekend. Very I sweet. love this guy. He's fantastic. Yes. yes. He's gonna, I'm going to have to hire him to go around the circuit with me, you know? And... <laughs> you should. Yes. <laughs> He's a sweetheart. He so is. Here... Is, is he, does he comment on your show uh, quite a bit? Or Yes. Yes. Oh. I, I have regulars that. Of course. You know, yeah. I'm sure Jennifer you Jennifer and Nate and Jose. Oh, that's and, wonderful. Yeah. And David. Um so here, Jennifer is asking, what really happens in a love scene on the soap? Oh, give us the tea. What happens? Well, you know, you 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 uh, you try to do it as naturally as you can, obviously, you know, when you're yeah. doing a, a love scene like that. Those 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 can always uh, well, they sometimes can be uncomfortable, as you know, particularly if you're with someone you're not crazy about or they're you know they're not crazy about you or whatever but uh you know you try to make sure you're you have a few mints before the before the scene and yeah you uh you know you just uh you you know i i mean everyone's different but and and now nowadays they have these uh, intimacy uh, coaches on on the set to to direct these kinds of scenes but back when i was doing this sort of thing uh you just basically went for it and uh you know um uh, it was great. I mean, uh, it's a, the one time I could cheat on my wife and I not get in trouble, you know. It's so like pre makeout, yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah, totally. I know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I started an acting class <laughs> <laughs> a few years ago. Yeah. This guy that was like twenty one, and I they were like, "Kiss him," because I was like, "I can't. He's too young." And then I was like, mm, and I was like, "Oh, I like this." Yeah. Yeah. Why not? I I know. I know. I know. But he's legal. That's okay. He's legal age. I know. You're it's a beautiful just... woman. I'm sure he didn't mind one bit. 
Thank you. No, he was, he was very cute too. No, uh, yeah. <laughs> I didn't mind it at all. Uh, I'm, I'm having a little lemonade, by the way. This is, that's okay. Nice. Uh, Jose, actually, speaking of that, any foods you try to avoid the night uh, after that, that might alter your voice? You know what, the Jose, that's a very good question. Um, if you're going to do something, if you're going to go to the booth and you're going to be uh, doing some uh, vocally stressful things, but even if you're not, you, you want to avoid creams or, you know, ice cream or dairy, mostly dairy cheese, stuff like that. You don't want to eat a bunch of that because it, it'll gunk up your throat and uh, you don't want that when you're in the booth. Um, but yeah, or, you know, and a lot of people say don't drink coffee when you're in the booth because it's uh, it'll dry up your, your voice. Honestly, I always drink coffee because I'm a coffee nut and I love coffee mm -hmm. and I'm I'm always sipping on it in the booth. So uh, don't go by me, but they they tell you not to drink coffee when you're doing this stuff. Um, you know, it, it's like anything. If something works for you, you do it. You know, if it doesn't, you, you don't. And uh, but there there are there are a few you know hard and fast rules about this stuff, but. You know, for the most part, you just uh, whatever works, whatever, whatever gets you to that that place, you know. Absolutely. Uh, when you first started, were there any role models that you looked up to? Well, when I when I first started, as I said, I wanted to be an on camera actor. So I, I, I love Sean Connery. As you can see, I, I'm a yeah. James Bond. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I just it's funny. I had I had the day off today. So I, I actually watched a, a Bond movie. It's kind of nice. Uh, uh, to do that. I don't have a, the luxury of time to do that very much, but, uh, I do love the Bond movies. And, uh, so Sean Connery is a huge, uh, uh, you know, idol of mine and, uh, uh, Lawrence Olivier, um, mm. Clint Eastwood, uh, Brando. Uh, there was a lot of those guys that really influenced me. Now, when I got more into the, uh, to the voice world, I, I really appreciated uh, Mel Blanc. You know, he's he's the granddaddy of all this stuff, and he uh, he really he really kind of created this whole thing. And uh, he would do all of the characters in the cartoons, <laughs> every character. Damn. Yeah. So I mean, he was he was phenomenal and an incredibly talented man, and uh, and he he really was the the granddaddy of this whole thing. So so I I defer to him. There's a lot of wonderful. Uh, 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 Frank Welker, uh, Dee Bradley Baker, uh, Nolan North. I mean, there's so many great, great, uh, voice actors out there that are just terrific. Um, uh, so yeah, Mark Hamill, another one, but, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's been great. And, um, you know, there are, it's nice to have people like that inspire you, you know, yes. and uh, if you can ex inspire people, I think that's, that's always a good thing. And uh, I've been inspired by many, many of those people. So. I yeah. love that. Yeah. Love that. Uh, do you have any fun stories about a show you worked on? Like, can you spill the tea? <laughs> I, like I, I have, I have a, I have a kind of a night. It's, this is kind of a funny story. Um, you know, I've done over, as you mentioned, I've done over 600 characters yeah. in, uh, you know, voiceover, voice acting. That's a lot. Damn. Yeah, it is a lot. And it's probably a lot more than that, honestly, uh, wow. at this point. But um, anyway, out of all those uh, parts that I've done, I can count on one hand the times that I've been cast without an audition. Wow. Yeah, it's, it's crazy, isn't it? I mean, I've been doing yeah. this for... 40 years, which is hard to believe because I'm only 35, but, um, you started you know, been... in the womb. <laughs> <laughs> I, had a, I had a booth in my mom's womb. Yeah. Um, but anyway, this is kind of a funny story. Um, there's a, there's a show called kingdom hearts, which is a huge game, huge game. I play Ansem and Tara Zaynord in that game. And, uh, and I was cast for that part. And the reason I was cast for that part was the, the guy who did the original, game was Billy Zane. He did the original Ansem. And for whatever reason, uh, he didn't come back for the second one. So they needed to replace him. And the reason I got the part was because uh, the guy who plays Ansem in Japan, this is a this is a dubbed game. The guy who plays Ansem in Japan does the voice of Bato and Ghost in the Shell. Oh. So the producer said, who, who does Bato and the Ghost in the Shell in America? And they said, Richard Epcar. So they just cast me. So I go into this uh, 
to this studio not knowing anything about this game and it's apparently it's it's a huge game i had no idea how huge this game was i'll tell you another story about that later but anyway i get into the booth and there's six uh japanese producers and there's six producers from disney and every time i say a line the engineer comes on the talk back and says just a minute and then they all confer with each other and talk amongst themselves for like five minutes yeah and then the guy comes back on the line he says can you do that a little slower so i do the line a little slower and then he comes back on the line and says just a minute and then they talk amongst themselves for like five or ten minutes they come back can you do that a little faster so I did a little fat. I mean, it, this went on like all day long. I was ready to jump off a cliff, you know. <laughs> Sounds like so it, yeah. Finally, the uh, the engineer comes out and I grab him and I said, how did Christopher Lee put up with this? And he said, oh, they did it to him once. And he said, all right, I'm going to tell you how we're going to do this. I'm going to read this script from the top to the bottom and then I'm going home. I thought that was fantastic. That I wish I could do that. Yeah. Badass, yes. Yeah, so, but he was Chris Lee, you know, and he was also in his 80s and probably didn't have a lot of time to Yeah, yeah you know? he didn't care anymore. <laughs> but I just, I love that story so much because yes. it was so great. And 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 a, a couple of weeks after that, I saw an interview with Spielberg and Peter Jackson, and they were talking about Christopher Lee, and they go, "He's great, we love him, but he'll do one or two takes, and then he'll just walk off the set and go back to his trailer." And I had to laugh, you know. Yeah. So, That's all you get from him. Yeah. Hey, it Matt was perfect. Christopher. I'm leaving. Goodbye. Yeah. You know, I, just, I love that. Total well, I've done eight of them now, and I still can't say that to those guys. So, I well, you know, it's like I guess when you're 80, you're like, you know, I might die. Like, <laughs> Thankfully, I'm not there yet. Yeah. <laughs> He's like, I don't care. I don't have this kind of time. It's it's uh, understandable. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So I'm gonna like I'm trying to like show all the questions and so we'll see if you can answer all the questions. And I sure. love this one. Jennifer is asking about the love scenes on the soap opera <laughs> if your wife was ever jealous you really want to scratch that wound don't you jennifer <laughs> um, um well i i'm sure she didn't like it we, we didn't really get into uh, conversations about it thankfully and uh you know and listen she's an actress too and i'm you know she i'm sure she had a lot of uh, scenes uh in fact there's a movie she was in that was a little torrid and uh you know, uh, I you just jealous? no, because I know no, it's right? it's the just job, you know, it's yeah. part of the job, you know, and course, you yeah. just have to do that. So I, yeah, I don't, it's not, uh, it's, it doesn't mean anything. No, it doesn't. Yeah. Mean anything. Totally. If she I runs agree. off with the guy. That's a different story. That's but, different. Uh, yes. <laughs> yeah. That would not be cool. Uh, Jose wants to know what animated series did you enjoy working on the most? Oh, that's that's such a hard one because, you know, they're all like your little children. You know, you love them all. You know, and you you want to do your best in every job. And and obviously, there's there's stuff you do that you you like more than than others. I love doing Bato and Ghost and Shell. He's one of my favorite characters. He was is a great great character and just a really honorable tough cop who takes no crap and just but has a heart of gold and a really dry sense of humor he's a he's a great character and then i love jegan for loop on the third he's another one that just is uh you know takes no crap from anyone but uh has has this really dry sense of humor and he's just you know uh, he's another guy just a, he's a tough guy with a heart of gold you know just a really good person inside you know but has this this tough yeah exterior, tough exterior. yeah, yeah. I like those kind of people too. Yeah, too. do you? Yeah, because I feel safe when I'm with them. <laughs> <laughs> they will pass for you, so I'm good. Yeah. It's like, right. yeah. Okay, good feel, to know. Yeah. I have a All friend right. like that. The one I went to Mexico, she will pass. Yeah. Yeah. And I'll good. watch. Just like, go, Heather, go, Heather. <laughs> I like Heather. I'm into the Heather song already. I'm just like ready to dance. <laughs> And a total heart of gold. She's the best. Oh, uh, that's, the, yeah. that's awesome. I, I'm the same way. You know, I love those type of people. Yeah. Um, yeah. So uh, here Chris is talking, uh, is asking, what's the hardest aspect of the industry? I'm going to get to your question in one second, Chris, because I thought of something else yes. that I wanted to mention uh, from Jose's question. And that is that I did... Um, a show called Legend of Korra, which was on the, uh, on, oh my goodness, uh, I'm going up on, a, on what uh, station it's on. But uh, anyway, 
You'll have to forgive me. I, when you have over 600 characters, it's hard to remember it's all the details insane. all the time. Yeah. But but anyway, uh, it, it was a wonderful character. I played Chief Saikon on uh, on this Legend of Korra show, and this was wonderful because we got to record it uh, the old-fashioned way, which means we did it like a radio play. So all the actors were in the studio together, and we would read together, and we could act off of each other, which most of the most of the stuff we do today is you're in the booth by yourself and you're reading your dialogue and then they put it together. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, hopefully if the director has done his job, it sounds like we're all re you know, interrelating with each other and talking to each other. But this, uh, this particular show, I got to actually work with these wonderful actors and we had Steven Root in there. We had JK Simmons. We had, uh, Mindy Sterling. We had, uh, uh, David Faustino, uh, uh, Janet Varney. We had all these wonderful, wonderful actors that you that I got to just relate. And it was a funny story because uh, I, 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 every day I would go in there, I'd be geeking out on all these wonderful actors, you know, uh, and appreciating them. And then one day in the middle of the show, they stopped the show and the producers got on the talk back and they said, hey, Richard, aren't you Bateau and Ghost in the Shell? I said, yeah. And they said, oh my God, we love that show. And they're like geeking out on me. I'm geeking out on them. Everybody's geeking Aww. out on each other. So that was that was really kind of a fun uh, fun thing. And and as I said, it's it's unusual today to uh, uh, to record like that because mm -hmm. uh, everybody does it by themselves. So it's really nice to be able to do that. And that, that's the way they used to do it, like in the old days in Hanna Barbera, and the, you know when the old timers would do that those shows. They yeah. would record together, and it's it's really nice to be able to do that. So uh, I don't just that's, can't. Why can't I remember the thing? I'm it's driving me crazy. If any of your if any of your followers remember the name of the the, uh, I'm yeah, they might actually. They There's might. one. And then I'm sorry. What was the, the, the was it Chris that just asked a question? What was Chris? Yes. Was what's the hardest aspect of the industry? You know, the hardest aspect is getting work, Chris. That's the hardest aspect. Because once you, <laughs> once you have the job, it's a lot of fun. You know, that's yeah. always fun. But, uh, you know, I, I hate to say it, but it's it's the, you know, it's called show business. And the business part of it is is not wonderful. I got to tell you, mm -hmm. it's not great. But, uh, you know, when you're when you're working, it's always wonderful. Because then you get to create and then you get to do what what it is you love to do mm -hmm. but getting to that point is always difficult and particularly if you're if you're starting out mm -hmm. it's really rough um you know it can be very very difficult uh then again some people you know go for it and they they luck out and they they do very well so you know the my my advice to anybody who wants to do this sort of work is if it's something you really want to do, then then do it. Go for it. Um, Pursue it. Yeah. If yeah. you have that creative force, right? Yeah, absolutely. Because uh, uh, yeah. there'll be a million people telling you not to do it or you can't do it or whatever, but who cares mm -hmm. about them? You know, I know so many people that they went to school and got uh, degrees as engineers and all that sort of thing. And said, well, I want to get a, I want to be in a, an industry that I can always work and, and rely on. And they got all they all got laid off, you know, so it doesn't, exactly. you know, so you might as well do what you love. Uh, if you're going to spend your life doing something, you might as well do something you enjoy and that you love uh, yes. because life is short. And uh, I oh, think, you need to, yeah, you need yeah. to do something you love like that. We're, we're gone. We all have an expiration yeah. date. So, you know, we got to just do what we love. And yeah. here, Chris is saying passion and hard work. Yes, yeah, especially passion, passion and hard work. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You have to have that passion and that drive. You have to love it and you have to want to do it. And, uh, you know, a lot of, you know, people always say in acting, if if you don't absolutely love it or you don't have to do it, then don't because it's it can be very tough. But yeah. I, you know, I've been very, very fortunate in that, uh, like I say, I've just I'm I'm working all the time and I just it's been great. And and, you know, aside from the working, which is wonderful and fun. Mm -hmm. I get to travel all over the world as a, as a guest of conventions everywhere. I get to go all over the world right. and be treated like a king. And it's just, it's, uh, it's really, it's been a, a great life. I can't really complain. You know, it's been, it's been really nice. This is what happens when you pursue your passion. And yes. Just go for it. Yeah. 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 Whatever the outcome, you know, not, I'm never attached to outcomes. I just go for it. Right. Yeah. That's right. The way, yeah. That's the way yeah. to live life. If you overthink it, you know, it's just not, 
it's too too much work. Well, they, you, you do stand up, right? So I do, yes. So now, how was that getting started into that? That had to be very difficult, no? Uh, well, <laughs> it was uh, because it's a very lonely art form. You're on the stage. You're the writer, the actor, the director, and you're mm -hmm. having a natural converse an unnatural conversation and make it look natural <laughs> that's yeah. really and eventually you know you get used to it but i was terrified the first few times i started in new orleans and like in biker bars and nobody would listen to me oh my god yeah it was rough. you're brave you're very brave yeah i, I cried a lot <laughs> No, I'm kidding. That, no, that's but, tough. Listen, uh, yeah, it is tough. Is, 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 is tough. I think that's one of the tougher ones, and you know, it really is. It is because it's such a lonely art, and it's like you have they, they're there looking at you, like make me laugh, and there's a lot of pressure. But now you know I've reached a point where I don't care. I just go and have fun, and that's and when it, you do well because yeah, you, know, <laughs> you probably do a lot better doing that, right? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. You know, there is something to be said about that. Uh, I know, like, particularly when I was uh, auditioning for some of these on-camera things, if I really, really, really wanted something, I never got it. But when I didn't give a crap about it, I always booked it. And that's, yeah. you know, it's it's kind of a universal thing. And it's yes. sometimes, it's same, I hate to say it, but sometimes it's true with women. <laughs> you know, yes. if you, if you, you keep going funny. after a woman, she wants to go away from you but if you kind of lay, lay back and say and then then she comes towards you it's kind of like right. uh yeah it, right am i right about that With guys the same thing yeah yeah the ones that you don't want they chase you till the end of the world and the ones that you want i know it's like crazy. No, i'm not ready to commit what <laughs> yeah it's, it's it's a kind of a universal i i think that's god's sense of humor actually i think that's yeah. what that is i think that's his his little thing so and it's kind of like the Buddhist thing, the attachment, the yeah. non-attachment that don't get attached to outcomes or people or, or things or anything, you know. And when you detach, that's when you allow things to happen. That's what I think. I agree with you. I agree with you a thousand percent. And I know that sometimes, you know, when I do, I do my work. Well, I'm at the point now I've been doing this so long, but this stuff right. just comes out of me. You know, I, I don't have to, I don't have to overthink it. I don't have to push. I don't have to try to make it happen it just it just naturally happens and it's it's a lot more uh organic it's a lot more engaging and it's uh, you know it, it, the, the result is always better so uh there is something to be said about not giving a crap <laughs> <laughs> yes exactly it's the best it's yeah. the best attitude um, yeah, like I, when I started doing that in stand up, it was a complete switch because yeah, I was able to just be that flawed person, you know, because in comedy and stand up, what we what I do um, is I take my flaw, my biggest flaw, and then I base all my writing on that. It's like a character, right? You don't have any flaws. What are your flaws? <laughs> I don't see any flaws. We don't have enough time. Uh oh. <laughs> we don't. Uh, that'll be another another conversation. Yeah, that's gonna yeah, you when you come back to the show, we'll, we'll have do a the, we'll do we'll put that on the midnight show. Yes, the midnight show. Yes. <laughs> Watch out, Howard. <laughs> <laughs> um have you ever wanted to quit and if you did how did you keep going um well i do but they, they won't let me <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's they, won't, right. they keep they keep hiring me i keep yes uh, no you know what? honestly honestly i thought you know as i'm as i'm getting older now i'm just thinking well you know things are going to kind of uh peter out and 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 but it's it's been the opposite for me it's amazing. just like it's like the, the i just keep every year i get more and more and more it's it's unbelievable i i, I don't know either either something will happen or i'll uh, i don't know i yeah, don't know just keep doing find, what you're doing. find yeah. me in the river somewhere i don't know <laughs> <laughs> and i love that voiceover actors is like you don't age because as long as your voice can do things you can work and forever well here's a here's a funny story about uh, loop on the third um I did the original, uh, the original uh, Lupin series that was that was released in America, uh, and and actually uh, Monkey Punch is the guy who created the show, and he actually came and and watched us one time when we were recording, and I was directing it, 
and he comes up to my kneecaps. I'm six foot six. I'm a very tall oh, guy. Yeah. So, uh, so monkey punch, I stood up to shake his hand. I think I scared the hell out of him. I, I think he thought I was Godzilla or something. He wanted to shoot me, but, uh, you know, we, we got along really well. And, uh, and the interesting thing about him was that I don't know if you know anything about Lupin the third, but he is a big James Bond fan. And he said, he, he put a lot of elements from the Bond movies into his cartoon. So I told him I'm a huge James Bond fan. So we hit it off really well and talked about that for a long time um but when we when i was first casting the show uh the character that i play is jegan and uh we couldn't find a jegan we i brought in like 200 actors to audition for these producers they didn't like anybody and one day we're just like we didn't know what to do and the producers looked at me and they said richard why don't you go in the booth and, and read it i said okay and I, I honestly didn't want the part. See, here we go back to not wanting something and getting it. Because <laughs> at the time, I thought, well, I'm going to be directing it. I just want to concentrate on directing it. I don't want to do character and have to worry about that. And so I read it. I read a few lines, and they said, okay, that's it. We found our Jigen. So now I'm so happy that I got this part because he's one of my favorites. And then a weird thing happened. When I was doing that show, I said, I really love this show. I hope I get to do more of this. Well, a couple, two, three years passed and nothing happened with it. Maybe it was five years. And I get this call from the studio and they said, Richard, we've got this, uh, this show where we'd like you to direct. I said, oh, what is it? They said, Loop on the Third. I said, really? I said, are you seeking me out because I did the original one? They go, no, we didn't know you did the original one. Now that just shows you how weird show business is, right? Really? When you think they would like seek me out because that show became insanely popular. So anyway, I said, well, I directed the first one and I played Jigen in it. So anyway, I told the guy, I said, I'll direct it, but only under one, one condition that you use my cast, the original cast. Mm -hmm. Well, the guys, uh, the producers were terrified because they thought we had you know, aged a hundred years or something, and we didn't sound anything like our characters. So they made us all re audition for our characters. So we did that. We had to do wow. that. Yeah. And thankfully, uh, they go, wow, those guys sound just like the guys in the original series. So, so we got it. And then we did, we did one, which went on Cartoon Network. It was the number one show. And then we did another one, went on Cartoon Network. It was the number one show. So now they seek me out because now they know I do this. There was a big movie they just did that was released in theaters called Lupin the Third, the First, which is a CGI animated feature, which is absolutely gorgeous. And unfortunately, they released it during the pandemic. So a lot of people didn't get to see it. But if you get a chance to see it, or or order it or buy it. It is it is a gorgeous looking movie. It's really incredible, and I wrote the adaptation for that, and I do the voice of Jigen in that. Yeah. And the same thing happened to me when I did Ghost in the Shell. Now, uh, I did Ghost in the Shell. Uh, God, this is like 1996. The movie came out, and it was the number one video in the world. The sell that's back in the days when they sold the videos. Remember yeah, yeah. those yeah. days? That's probably before your yeah. time, but but anyway, we'll pretend yes. They had videos that they used. To... <laughs> <laughs> anyway, it was the number one outselling Disney, outselling Warner Brothers, outselling everybody. It was a number one. And then about same thing. About five years later, they called me up and they said, "Hey, we've got this series called Ghost in the Shell, and we want you to come in." Uh, and I'm thinking, oh, great. They want me to do the series, do Bateau in the series. They said, we want you to come in and audition for the role of Bateau. And I thought, you want me to audition for Bateau? They said, yeah. I said, oh, okay. And I'm thinking, yes. <laughs> and I was not happy about that. Uh, so once again, I go in there and there's a gazillion guys and they're auditioning for the thing. And I went in and I got it. I booked it, thankfully. And it was only, only two of us from the movie that made this series. Uh, it was me who did Bateau and William Knight who plays Aramaki in the series. And I was so thrilled because uh, I'm still playing it. Now we have one on, there's a two major uh, series right now on Netflix called Ghost in the Shell 2024. I'm sorry, 2045. Ghost in the Shell 2045. And it's on Netflix and I'm still playing Bateau. So, nice. Yeah. So I'm thrilled to be doing that. And, uh, but it just shows you how how uh, up in the air this whole business is. There's no loyalty yes. to things that's happened. And those things that happened were almost like, uh, you know, happenstance. You know what I mean? Just like coincidence or 
uh, it's just weird to me because you would think that they would would want to get the original people involved, but they they don't care. <laughs> they just don't yeah, care. Apparently. Yeah. So what what would be? Not um, that I'm bitter or anything. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, if somebody wanted to do voiceover, yeah. what would be your advice to them? First, um, in the art form, you know, and then business-wise, what would be your recommendation or advice? Well, honestly, you know, I think a lot of people kind of have it in their heads that uh, if they can do funny voices or whatever, that they can have a career in it. And it really it doesn't really work that way. Um, you really, honestly, if you want to, if you want to make it in in voice acting, you have to be a good actor. You have to be the best actor you can be. And uh, I would recommend uh, doing plays. I would recommend uh, reading out loud every day. See, that's another thing uh, mm -hmm. people don't realize it. But when we go in and we do these games, we don't get to see the scripts. Ooh. We only see the script when we're in the booth. So you have to cold read a performance. Oh my God, that yeah. is badass. So that's a that's a specific talent that you really yeah. need to develop. And that's a muscle that even even celebrities, a lot of celebrities I've directed are terrible at. They're just really? terrible at it. Yeah, it's because terrible. they're, they're used terrible. to studying a script and spending time with it and learning the lines, which is fine. That's the way you would do a normal acting job. But for this stuff, you need to jump in the booth and be able to deliver cold read a performance. So. Wow. If that's something you don't feel comfortable doing, then I would recommend reading out loud every day. You know, just keep reading out loud every day. I would, uh, I would just become the best actor you can be, and uh, and I think that that helps imme immeasurably because uh, that's really what it's all about. At the end of the day, it's about a good performance. You know, and making it believable and making it real and bringing those words off the page to life. You know, that's really what our job is to do that. Absolutely. Um, yeah. Um, here, Nate is asking, what have been some of your favorite parts that you've played in theater? I, I love this guy. I'm going to. Yes. <laughs> you should hire him. He's, he's the goat of, of question answering. Yes. Answer. Um, anyway, uh, well, I did Lincoln once, and that was a wonderful experience. I really enjoyed that. He was a great character, and I really, I really got into him. Um, what other plays i did it we did a play here in, in beverly hills uh called uh rumors it was a, a neil simon play and i played kind of a uh a, a politician that should say it all um <laughs> yeah. <laughs> enough said yeah yeah um what are some of the other ones that i've done that i've really enjoyed i, I did a, i've done a bunch of them it's been honestly it's been a while since i've been on stage but uh i do i used to love uh doing stage and uh and I know uh, from doing comedies that, uh, you know, it's, it's, I, I think, I, I believe it would be akin to doing stand up in a way that, uh, that sometimes if you try to push for the laughs, you don't get the laughs. But if you just allow it to come organically, then it's going to happen. So uh, yeah. I think, I, I think it's relatable in, on that level, you know. Absolutely. You just have to be authentic and stand up. Have you, now, have you done theater? Have you done stage? Yes, I've done it. I've, uh, in New Orleans, when I lived in New Orleans, I actually won Best Actress Award, like the That's Big Easy wonderful. Entertainment. That wonderful. Big Easy Entertainment. Um, so, yeah, and I was like two years into acting. So I uh, love New Orleans. Yeah, oh, my God, I love it. I love it. Why did you leave, just out of curiosity? Um, you wanted bigger story. things? <laughs> it's a long story. Oh, okay. It involves a lot of complicated right. nuance. Another segment of the Midnight Show. And out of the flaws and then the stories. <laughs> We've got a lot of a, a long list of things we're going to hit. Definitely. So. Can I be a guest on your Midnight Show? You can be a guest anytime. Awesome. Then yeah. we'll talk about all of this. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I know I love New Orleans. And uh, New yeah. Orleans is uh, one of the places that I've been uh, a few times for conventions, you know. Oh yeah, that's right. Yes. I, I love it there. I just, I love the food. I love the people. Oh, I love the music. Yeah. The music, uh, oh my gosh, living in New Orleans was the best. The music, the spotted cat. Place. Did you ever go to that place? The spotted cat, mm -mm. it's a it's, it's, it's a it's a just they all all these guys just drop in and they just jam together and just they're jam, all yeah. phenomenal. I mean, they're all like world class musicians, it's just incredible. Oh, the musicians there are incredible, it's just yeah. amazing. Yes, it it's, it's a great city. I'm actually going back 
in October, I'm going to headline House of Comedy in New Orleans. How wonderful. Yeah, so I'm excited. When is that? Maybe I'll, uh, I'll go out there just as an excuse. Oh, my God. That would be great. October 22nd. October 22nd. All right. I'm going to mark that down. Who knows? Oh, my God. Stranger okay. things have happened. October yeah. October Okay. I hope I'm right. And that's in New Orleans, right? In New Orleans. Yeah. It's in, I think it's in the warehouse district. The and what's the name Club. of the, the, the venue? House of Comedy. House of Comedy. That's better than the House of Wax. <laughs> yeah. Well, I didn't have, I don't have enough Botox. I actually never had Botox. <laughs> That's good. Never well, you look great. It. So whatever you're doing, keep doing it. It's called StreamYard filters. You know, I'm kidding. It's the lighting and the makeup, you know. I'm looking at myself. I have more uh, bags under my eyes than Raymond Burr, for God's sake. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why God made concealer. Ah, okay. ah. <laughs> I'm a voice actor. I don't worry about that stuff. Yeah, you don't worry about that. Yeah, I'm on the <laughs> stage, so I get judged a lot. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Um, so here, Nate has a question. Yes, he Nate. says, who is your favorite James Bond? Sean Connery, of course. Oh, yeah. Of course. You, you had said that, yeah. But, you know, honestly, I do. I love them all for, you know, they they, they all have brought something of themselves to the part. And I, and I think that's all you can ask of any actor, you know. Yeah. Uh, obviously, uh, when somebody creates something, uh, you know, you're kind of, I, I just thought Connery was such a great fit for that character. Yeah. And he just, there yes. was something really, uh, uh, he was, he was tough, but he was sophisticated and you, you believe that he could, uh, you know, have dinner with the King one minute and step out into the alley and beat the crap out of six guys, believably, you know, and that's, a, that's yeah. a hard, that's a hard thing to, to believe in, yeah. uh, these guys. And, uh, uh, you know, a lot of them, you, you would believe they could have the dinner with the king, but you wouldn't necessarily believe they could go in the alley and beat the crap out of six guys. And yeah. Connery conveyed that he could conceivably do that and believably do that. So I really liked him in the part. And and uh, I loved his accent. I thought he was his accent was great. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Yes, of course. <laughs> actually, actually, I did. I did a, a Sean Connery voice for a character. In a, um, what was the... Uh, uh, Bl uh, Tekka Man Blade was the name of the series. This is kind of another funny, weird story. I did this show called Tekka Man Blade, and originally they hired me to kind of do a George C. Scott kind of a gruff character, but this guy was the, uh, he was like Scotty. It was like a Star Trek thing, and he was like the Scotty character. So uh, we started doing a, like a Sean Connery voice, and the director loved it. He goes, let's do that. Let's keep that and forget the George C. Scott voice. Um. So I did this Sean, this Sean Connery voice for this character. Mm -hmm. And uh, and then I was I had this job uh, for a year or two where I was uh, supervising for DreamWorks and for uh, for Universal. And they would fly me all over the world and I would supervise their movies into other languages. And one night we were in we were I was in Germany supervising uh, Gladiator into German. <laughs> wow! And I'm in my my hotel room, and I turn on the TV, and all of a sudden, Techno Man uh, uh, was it Techno Man? Maybe it was Techno Man. That's the name of it. Techno Man. Techno Man comes on television, and the guy who's playing uh, Scotty is doing it in German, but he's doing it with with a Sean Connery accent, and I had to crack up because <laughs> oh you know we we came up with that, but uh, but when you do those 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 kinds of jobs, you realize that uh, a lot of times other countries come to America, for example, to dub their uh, their stuff into English, and then when they go to the other countries, uh, like France, there's a thing called Figs, which is France, uh, Italy, uh, Germany, and Spain. Those are the main dubbing hubs of the world, and they take our scripts, and then they they translate in their language of those. And the reason they do that is because we've, we've already time coded the whole script for them and everything. So everything, all the lines are where they should be. So now all they have to do is just put their translation on there and make it, make it fit the mouth. So a lot of times they'll hear our stuff and they'll listen to it. Uh, there was a, the ghost in the shell movie uh, came out uh, with uh, uh, Scarlett Johansson. I don't know if you heard about that or not, but uh Mm -hmm. One of the one of the guys who played one of the lead characters in it, he, he we had a showing of my my show that I was talking about that movie that was the number one selling movie, 
uh, they had a big screening of it at Lemley uh, not so long ago, and they asked me to go in and introduce the the movie. So I went and did that. Nice. And then there, yeah, it was fun. And uh, and then the, this guy in the audience uh, is just waiting there before everyone left, and he said, "May I may I meet you?" I said, "Of course." He said, "I I I can't remember his name, but he's a very famous actor in in Asia." And uh, he said, "I'm playing the Togusa character," and he said, "I wanted to meet you because." our director had us watch all of your shows and we heard all of you guys. And so we're basing our characters on your performances. <laughs> so I thought, wow. well, that's, that's kind of interesting. So I, you know, I talked to him for a while and it was just very, very fun to, to meet him. And, you know, you never know how you, how you uh, impact other people, you know, that's true. Yeah, absolutely. That's, well, that was fun. that's one of the most important things, you know, yeah. how you impact and other people the energy you put out right exactly yes. yeah i think yeah. um i'm gonna ask you a little personal question sure. um what are you grateful for uh i'm grateful for my family i'm i'm, I'm grateful that i that i'm in good health i'm grateful that i have a home to live in i'm mm -hmm. um i I'm I'm grateful for the work. I'm I'm uh, I'm grateful for a lot of things. I'm very very grateful. I, I'm I'm very very fortunate, and uh, and it's not it's not lost on me. You know, believe me. I I know uh, a lot of people are struggling and and mm -hmm. having hard times. And uh, you know, listen, I I went through a lot of hard times too. But I'm in a place right now in my life where uh, where I'm doing really well. Where's that wood again? Not wood and. Uh, Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, so that's that's what I'm grateful for. I have an incredible family. They're all very talented. Uh, my wife's an actress. I said she's a, also a director and a writer, incredible writer. Um, I, my daughter is a uh, singer songwriter who's an nice. incredible singer. My son is a professional drummer on Broadway. He's done a bunch okay. of shows and played with Justin Timberlake and Rihanna and some very big people and. Uh, He's doing really well, and we just—he just had a, a, a well, not just he's, his son's already four years old. It goes like that, but uh, yeah, I'm I'm a grandfather now. He calls me Pickles, my grandson. Oh, how cute! <laughs> Pickles. Oh. I, I I once said to him, "Call me Grandpa." And he got mad at me. He said, "No, you're Pickles." <laughs> he got Where really did that mad at me. come from? I don't know. I have he's no just idea. like random. Pickles. He's very random. Yeah, he's very, very random. random. Yeah, he's a character. He's definitely a character. But he's so he's such a cute kid. Aww. And so I'm I'm grateful for all that. It's just uh, it's just been it's been really terrific. I'm grateful for the fans. The fans I have the the greatest fans in the world. They're so wonderful, and uh, I love meeting them. And um, you know, they come up to me with they tell me stories about uh, shows that I've done that, that that meant so much to them. And Aww you know, that helped them through hard times. And, I, and I, I love hearing that. It makes me feel good, you know. That's amazing. Uh, yeah. So that's, I'm grateful for all of that. What do you feel is your mission in life? Boy, that's a tough, uh, tough oh, question. Yeah. I told uh, you. Yeah, <laughs> you don't ask the easy questions, do you? Uh, you know, honestly, um, my mission is to, uh, I, I think to, if I, I like to help as many people as I can, I obviously I, I can't help everybody, but you know, I try to, I try to be helpful. I try to be, I try to be kind. I try to, uh, um, but, uh, the, the, the mission, I don't know that I have a specific mission other than enjoying my life, because I think that, yeah. uh, life goes so fast that I think you really need to enjoy your life. I just see so many people Yes. Worry and, uh, you know, they just are, are depressed and sad and all that. And I just yes. think, you know, you're here, you know, enjoy your life. Uh, do something you enjoy, you know, go yes. do whatever, whatever floats your boat, whatever that is, find that thing and, uh, and do it and have fun mm -hmm. and enjoy yourself. And, and maybe you can find someone who, who shares that, uh, point of view and, and, and you live your life together. That's not always an easy thing. I know especially in this, this world that we have today, yeah. but, uh, but yeah, I mean, enjoy yourself. I think that's, uh, I think people forget that. Yes. And be, I, I'm always grateful that I'm alive. Every time I have a problem, yeah. Brenda is a, wait, you know why I'm having that problem? Cause I'm alive. 
Yeah. If I was I, dead, I wouldn't have any printer problems, you know? The other day, I uh, I went to a U-Haul and, re and rented a truck to return a, a sofa that we got from Costco. <laughs> These are these are uh, uh -oh. first world problems. Anyway, yeah. uh, I went to the uh, the U-Haul and they gave me a, a really bad truck. And uh, uh -oh. it was you know every time I put the brake on, the truck would be like lurching forward. And I just thought I'm going to get an accident in this thing. I mean, it was really dangerous. Yeah. So I was kind of pissed off, and I'm like uh, you know driving this thing, and then I I saw this guy on the sidewalk, and he had no legs, and I'm going. You know how can I be upset about this? You know I mean, this yeah. is this is nothing. Look at this guy. You know it's so and, and uh, you know I just think you know you just have to put all this stuff into perspective. You know yes. and, and and just do the best you can and uh, and try to try to smile and enjoy it as as much as you can. Totally, my life. I didn't realize the show would be so philosophical. <laughs> oh, it is. I am very philosophical. That's wonderful. I love that. Yeah, I love it. Um, Beneath this blonde hair, there's a brain. <laughs> no, I, I never. <laughs> no, I'm joking. I'm kidding. I know, I know. I know. I know. No, no, no. But I do play the dumb blonde when I need to. You could absolutely play that character, but I know yeah. you're not a dumb blonde. Oh, no, 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 no. And I'm very yeah. philosophical. I always try to, you know, see why am I here or what can I do to make the world better? What can I do to make my life better? You know, I mean, those are things that I think are important to ask yourself and I, yeah i know i think those those are really important questions and uh i i'm glad you asked me that because I, I i hadn't really thought about that to tell you the truth so those, yeah those are very good questions thank you yeah. thank you yeah. yeah absolutely my overthinking is paying off <laughs> <laughs> good good times um so the last question i always ask my guests yes is, da -da -da -da. are you ready i don't know am i okay <laughs> Uh, what do you want to be known for? Uh, I would like to be known uh, for someone who was talented and someone who was kind. Those are the those are the things yeah. I would. Yeah. yeah, and you're very kind and oh, humble. Thank you. thank you, thank you. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Thank you, Grace. This has been, it was a lot of fun. It was a lot of fun. It was you like 47 awesome. years in the making, but uh, we, we finally got together and I know it was rough. I had to I had to bow out, then you had to bow out. And I, we finally we finally did it. That's all that matters, right? Uh, I'm glad, yes, it does. And I'm I'm super glad we did it. Me too. Well, I hope you can come back at some point later this year and invite me. I'll come back. Oh yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. I will trust. Uh, <laughs> and are you, oh, I, I did want to say one thing before we go, yes. if, if I can, yes. uh, there's, there's a couple of conventions. I just want to let people know about that. I'm yes. going to be at, uh, there's a thing called anime North in Canada. It's in Toronto, Canada, mm -hmm. and that's going to be July 15th through the 17th. I'll be there with Ellen. And then there's one, in August 13th, which is here in Los Angeles, uh, called Ronin Expo, and I'll be at that one as well. Great. So those are those are two conventions uh, that are coming up pretty quick, and uh, and I just actually I got uh, I got a uh, possible uh, con uh, convention in the Middle East somewhere, which is kind of interesting. Wow. So we'll see how that goes, but yeah. uh, you, you know, you may you may not hear from me again, but. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll go. I take Heather with me, and she will pass for you. There you go. Yeah, yeah she'll be like, good. Yay. She'll be good. Now I know she speaks Spanish, but does she speak Farsi? That's what I have to find out. No, she doesn't speak Spanish. Oh, she, she does. With the cop, though. Oh, oh, I thought she spoke Spanish. You're the one that speaks Spanish. I, I speak. Oh, yeah. He didn't expect me to. I was like, That's... I got to rescue Heather because she was trying. I was like, I'll let her work her charm oh, and yeah, with I've, the cop. And I've I was heard like, some of those horror stories. Oh yeah, that. I was like, listen, Mr. Cop, I speak Spanish better than you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so let's let's do this. No, yeah. but it was good. I'm so glad that it's over with and I'm Thank not God, in bed. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> <laughs> another yeah. emergency avoided. I know. Uh, so where can people follow you on IG? What is your IG handle? Um, please follow me on Instagram. And it's just Richard Epcar. Uh, Richard Epcar okay. on Instagram. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Facebook. I'm on all that stuff. Um, 
I do have fan pages on Facebook and all that stuff. You can follow me there, but I really would prefer Instagram because no one seems to care about that other stuff anymore. And the only reason I, I even keep Facebook is just to promote uh, my yes. uh, appearances at conventions. That's really the only reason, to be honest with you. Totally. Yeah. So I, I keep it for the compliments when I change my profile picture. <laughs> <laughs> I'll have to check that out. I got to check out the, <laughs> the previous pictures. Yes. <laughs> awesome. Thank you so much for being on the show, Richard. And um, thank you, everybody, for your questions and your comments. You guys are awesome. Richard, you are amazing. Thank, thank you, you. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll see you guys next week. Next Sunday. No, next week. No, in a month. I used to do this weekly and now ah, okay. yeah. My, well, my thank you. Thank you for having me on your show. I appreciate it, Grace. And you two are thank amazing you. and terrific and lovely. So I appreciate awesome. that. Awesome. Let's read some real quick. Great interview. Uh, I will be call pranking on the midnight hour. I hope so. I really hope so. <laughs> I will follow you on Instagram. So uh, yay. thank you. Thank awesome. you. I appreciate it. All right. That. You guys. All, right. All the best, guys. You. All right. Bye. Have a good Bye. night. Have a good night.